All right, I got a really good response to my Katana as EDC video and some really good questions. Thanks, everybody. But I realized going over the questions, I probably skimmed over some really important stuff. And the reason why I did that is I figured you'd get that kind of information from, well, better presenters than me. But in the spirit of answering those questions and continuing our conversation, I was going to do a series of videos covering some of those things in more detail starting today with an informal myth busting of sorts regarding draw speed versus orientation of the sword and technique. But a couple of things I need to get out of the way up front. We're dealing with a sample of one today and by the way no stopwatch. So what you're going to be looking for is what looks like the speed of my draw and also hopefully how effective it looks and then you can let me know in the comments. But I don't consider myself as someone who practices sword drawing nearly enough. I, I don't consider myself really any good at it. So you're really looking for how these different techniques affect my performance and then maybe compare it to your experience in teaching and again we'll have that conversation. Which gets us to the next and probably biggest thing. Not only am I here wearing street clothes and yes a nylon web gun belt and there's a reason why it's nylon instead of leather. We'll talk about that later. But my view of drawing any weapon as compared to Iaido practice. Very different. How so? Well, I'm thinking I'm either in a situation where I've been attacked suddenly. Now, hopefully I've had some situational awareness to be kind of ready, but maybe not. But I'm having to draw my, my weapon in a hurry to respond to that threat, or I've been intentionally not reaching for it. Because I'm either trying to catch the other guy off guard or more likely trying to keep the situation de-escalated, but all of a sudden it goes south and I have to respond in a hurry to an unpredictable situation that is probably very adrenalized. So yeah, pretty much the opposite of most of your Iaido practice, right? All right, that out of the way, let's see what happens. I have no intention to contradict anything you're being taught in whatever school you're studying. Just add to the conversation. That said, let's talk about sword orientation to begin with. Carrying the sword like this, we talked about in other videos, this is a draw position. It definitely projects that you're like having your hand on your handgun kind of ready to go. Also walking around like this with the thing sticking out, it's going to hit stuff, including people, that's a pretty severe insult. So you're probably going to be like this. Now, when I consider sword drawing, I consider a bigger picture than just getting the sword out of the scabbard. That's where we're going to start. I consider it as being, while well, getting both hands on it, including my left, orienting the sword, drawing the sword, through to doing whatever that first emergency technique, that priority technique I need to do. That's the end of the action. How long does it take me to get my left hand onto the sword? We talked about this in the EDC video. If it's firm up against my body, that's pretty quick. How long does it take me to go from here, which is a much more effective, efficient, non-dangerous carry position, to here? Well, not that long. I can do it fairly quickly, but yeah, there's some time involved there. Can I draw the sword without tilting it? Now, in this first set, I want to take a look at the speed of me just getting right hand on the blade getting it out of the scabbard and we'll take a look at that from different orientations. So from blade vertical-ish, okay, to that extra fraction of a second to turn it this way, okay, but still edge up. Difference in those two? Not much. Let's do it again. So here to more horizontal but still edge up right now what about turning the edge sideways which is very common I've got to take it from here to here and then turn it so not that much longer now there are certain practitioners of code you which will say I just did that wrong because their style would insist that you start drawing with the edge up and then turn it halfway through. I, I tend to get binding, especially again if I'm doing this 
in response to an immediate threat. So I tend to practice so that as soon as my hands make contact with the blade and I initiate the draw, that's when it turns. This would also include turning it further if I want to send the sword more upwards. In other words, edge down. Did you see any difference in draw speed? You probably saw a lot of difference in body mechanics. Let's add technique into that now. What's the first technique? Well, let's say it's a cut. It's the most common thing to start with. That would basically look like that, okay? Or maybe I want to go more upwards. Or maybe I want to go more downwards, All right? See any differences in speed? What about thrusting? Well, that could be here, or it could be over here, or that famous, well, I really don't consider it behind me, but it's the one that looks like this, right? What about parries? Well, you should be able to draw into any of them, but let's, let's look at a couple. Right, pretty quick. Not much faster than the actual draw versus something like that. What'd you see? All right. Quick change of sword. Let's see if you see anything different. Not going to repeat all of that, but let's take a look at just a couple. Did you see a difference? What's the difference in sword? Well, about three, four inches. This would be my Kokatana, Chisa Katana. Like a gunslinger going for that faster draw, having a shorter barrel on the revolver allows it to clear the holster a little bit quicker. And I feel like it kind of does and doesn't because of another factor. This blade is, well, a bit heavier because it doesn't have a bohi like, well, the Unakubi Zukiri is a pretty light sword. So you've also got to consider inertia. All right, where is this going? All right, briefly revisiting that fast draw handgun analogy. Shorten the barrel, but competitors will lighten the weapon to the extreme. Remove as much metal as they physically can, maybe replace it with aluminum or carbon fiber, to the point where if you fired a full charge round out of it, it would probably explode. And at that point, it's not really a gun for me, at least in my head anymore. It's more like the difference between a sword and a fencing foil. But the competition is about the quickest you can get your hand on your weapon, cock it, and fire it. And we're talking hundredths of a second. How do they do it? Well, they make some modifications to the way they carry it, as well as the weight of the weapon and the length of the weapon. There's usually a lot more exposed, a lot easier to get out, so it wouldn't necessarily be what I'd call se secure for carry. It stays put enough to stay put during the draw, and that's about it. We're going to see something like this again. The other thing, what's expected of them, again, Get your hand on your gun, cock it, and draw it. So a fast draw for them looks like this. Okay, just enough to clear that holster, and you'll see I actually bend backwards. They'll use everything they can to maximize how fast they can clear the holster and pull the trigger. And with practice, they can get accurate enough to hit a target. But do I consider this pragmatic deployment of a handgun. No, that would be me going to where I normally carry my EDC, being able to consistently get to it and draw it into a position where I can use it for, well, the reasons I use a gun for. Totally different practice. But again, not disrespecting the amazing things they've managed to accomplish. It's just not for me. 
So with this technique, the extreme version of why people like this for fast drawing is they're again going for speed of the draw and they're thinking about inertia. What's got more mass, the sword or the saya? That's pretty clear, usually, unless you have a super heavy saya. Yeah, so is it then more efficient to move the sword or to move the Saya. What did you guys just see? Which one was quicker? I feel like I would have to agree that peeling the Saya off is quicker. Now I mentioned early on I'm wearing a web belt which is similar consistency to a traditional OB, just a little bit stiffer, but not a leather one because a leather one would have, well, resistance, friction. I'm doing everything I can to maximize how free that is, including not tying the sword in, and yeah, having the belt a little bit looser than I normally would. So yeah, not as secure for everyday carry. Now, you could take this to an extreme. I mentioned how I kind of count all aspects of the draw when I consider you know, the timing, the duration of the draw versus its effectiveness, but they'll cut some corners again, like that gunslinger. And I've seen practitioners of this particular flavor start from here, okay? They'll actually be leaned forward into it with the weapon completely extended, ready to go both hands on the blade. Usually with their opponent, staged opponent, right here, literally close enough to kiss. Okay, so then they impress you by the fact that they can draw the sword and have it on that opponent in, well, the blink of an eye. Looks really cool. Is it pragmatic? I would say, if you have any sense of what this is, the first thing anybody with brains is going to do is step back out of measure. And then you've lost all advantage to that speed draw. The whole point of a technique like that for surprise is that they, well, they don't see it coming. So yeah, you don't want to telegraph. For me, this, this is like extreme telegraphing. Does it work? Well, yes and. But I also want to throw in that you don't have to go, well, all the way. Many styles of EIDO will use some of this. And what am I talking about? Well, take a look at this. A combination of the two. Okay, I did about half with the Saya and half with drawing the blade. How did that look? Felt better. Maybe not quite as fast, but yes, I've seen many styles that will pull the Saya back or extend it part way and then pull it back. Not, as, not all the way out, but there is definitely some advantage seen to doing this, which is why I think certain schools do loosely loop their Sigeo versus tightly securing the sword. But obviously if your sword is secured to you firmly, you're not going to be able to do this very well. Maybe, maybe a little bit. Now, one other problem I've got about it is, well, I think maybe the inertia is working against me, at least for what I'm used to. I could just be doing it wrong. What am I thinking? Well, if I'm drawing into a cut, right, I've kind of got some inertia going with the sword during the draw. Now, I want to make sure that I'm separating straight movement from curve movement, or I'm going to send my sword through the side of my scabbard and probably my hand. So that's something you need to, to master. But I do get everything moving forward together in a chain. With this, yeah, once I'm free, my sword is kind of... Well, almost dead in the water out here. If I'm gonna cut from here, it's very much from wrist. It doesn't have the same momentum and energy for me. Now, if I'm going to do any technique that it would make sense to have the sword kind of in a neutral position within the range of what I would consider my normal guard, that's not a bad technique. So, not completely useless, but for certain things, yeah, for me, it just doesn't, it doesn't work as well. Others, works fine. So, have you had any experience with this? Seen it? Practiced it? Does your particular practice of Iaido have anything similar to anything I've shown? Um, was any of what I just demonstrated 
useful? Again, let's start the conversation. Let me know in the comments and until our next installment, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.